वेलकम टू क्या लग रहा है मार्केट आर डेली प्रोग्राम ऑन निफ्टी बैंक निफ्टी एंड डॉलर एनालिसिस व्हाट डू वी डू इन दिस इट्स फेयरली सिंपल वी लुक एट थ्री डेटा पॉइंट्स चार्ट्स एंड द वॉल्यूम्स इन द चार्ट्स वी लुक एट ओपन इंटरेस्ट डेटा व्हिच टेल्स अस व्हाट द बिग ऑप्शन सेलर्स आर डूइंग एंड वी लुक एट एफआईडीआई डेटा व्हिच टेल्स अस फॉर व्हाट फॉरेन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स आर अप टू एंड बेस्ड ऑन दीस थ्री डेटा पॉइंट्स वी डिसाइड व्हाट द बिग पीपल इन द मार्केट आर डूइंग and we try to replicate whatever it is that we are doing no economic commentary no trying to predict the market no trying to assess the impact of what china's made up numbers will have on the imaginary stock market next week nothing like that right so on that prelude let's get started with kya lag raha hai market the first thing see last week when i took your leave i remember saying that 19 uh 300 action is very critical now the catch is uh is it broken i am not entirely convinced for two reasons right of course there is a case to believe that <coughs> this was a bearish engulfing this is a confirmation of the bearish engulfing with a gap uh the second candle <coughs> but here's the problem in the nifty spot charts this what you are seeing here is a gap there is a gap between 19200 and um uh, 34 and 19 uh 201 so there is a 30 point gap between 19230 and 19 uh 19200 right now if you look at the low of uh the candle on uh friday the low of the candle has touched the top of the gap right now there is of course the classical theory that all gaps will be filled i mean of course there is a difference between exhaustion gap and there but largely right in general gaps have a tendency to act as a support right so uh, it's called uh, in japanese candlestick uh, patterns they also call it window uh, instead of the gap but no matter what you call it they have a tendency to be points of support or resistance so let me just highlight the gap this is where the gap starts and this is where the gap ends i mean it's only 30 points between the start and end of the gap but nevertheless it is a gap right and we tested the beginning of the gap right now this window will act as a support zone sometimes the top of the window acts as a support zone so i'm not convinced that 19300 is gone despite the fact that 19265 is where the bottom made us right and despite the fact that it has gone back inside the place where nifty broke out which is this black line now the reason why i'm saying that is see this is a perfect uh, uh uh ingredient for a fake out in the sense that it has gone back into the uh trend line from where it broke out yes but just below the trend line we have a support zone so if nifty is unable to go down further from here there's a tremendous chance that we'll see nifty bouncing right back right so i won't short here i'll see what happens at the bounce here like basically if it bounces back and at 19350 to 300 400 spot if nifty bounces back again right this area 19350 to 9400 i'll see the price action if it goes back again from here then i'll short but if it goes above the point where it broke out again then i'll long for new all time highs right so let me write that down nifty uh might find support at 19230 spot and there is a gap there uh see the price action on bounce Uh, of course uh, FO, the jackson hole conference gave like a very positive jolt to the market on friday night us indices were up 1% uh, our own gift city nifty was almost at 19400 on friday night so there is going to be a bounce in all likelihood tomorrow and then there's this china's news of uh, they are not taxing equity transaction so all of that might create a gap up tomorrow the question is what do we do at the gap up? if gap up does not sell and it continues then we are back into the zone where nifty broke out and it might just go up but at the gap up if they're selling again we might go down right this is the uh, 
technical positioning of the market right now because we are starting a week <clears throat> right now let's look at um, just reading the comments quickly is it a good idea to catch a falling knife if you don't love your hand much it is a very good idea to catch a falling knife uh, let's <laughs> weekly time frame right so here is an interesting thing <clears throat> It's very tempting to conclude that this is a <coughs> shooting star. But my point is it might be an inverted hammer because shooting stars are usually formed at the top of an uptrend with a gap. This is not the top of an uptrend. <coughs> this is the bottom of a downtrend. Now, of course, it would have been nicer had the color of this hammer been green. But it's not green, it's red. It is what it is. So it can act as a reversal candle. So at the top of a trend, when it happens with a gap down, this thing is a shooting star and it's a reversal to go down. But at the bottom of a trend, this thing actually, <clears throat> what you're seeing here, can be a reversal signal and an inverted bullish ha hammer. Uh, so if Nifty is able to close above the uh, open of last week, this week, so if this week the close is above the open of last week, then we have a confirmation for an inverted bullish hammer and we can see Nifty continue. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> the only thing which is bothering me is on the monthly time frame, this looks pretty bad. So if Nifty closes somewhere around this territory on the monthly time frame, it's going to be negative. It's going to be a bullish piercing, sorry, bearish piercing. And we can expect a sell off. But if Nifty is able to bounce, let's say uh, 200 points or 300 points from here, then the candle is invalidated. In fact, if it bounces like 300, 400 points from here, this becomes a bullish hammer of sorts. Then the whole view changes completely, right? So pay attention to an inverted hammer on weekly and a bearish piercing and a possible bearish piercing on monthly. <clears throat> Now let's look at option chain. Option chain, no surprises there, mega, mega, mega sell off. Everybody sold calls, but interestingly, there's no put unwinding at lower levels. People added puts at lower levels. 400 saw some put unwinding, but it's not much. Overall, option chain is not looking that bad, which is what is surprising me. Of course, yes, there is a bias towards call side, but it's not a very big bias either. PCR is only 0.7. It's actually <coughs> kind of neutral. So let's write both of it down. 195400 can 9300 and above has a lot of call writing. Uh, so but if there is a gap up tomorrow, all of these calls will run for cover and there could be a short covering value, right? As call writing. PCR is 0 0.7. Neutral. Now let's look at FI option data. I think FIs have oversold this time. I've never seen FI data at 1.25 is to 4 ratio ever. Right? This is 1.25, this is 4. The difference between calls and puts is staggering. It's a towering red and a very dwarfing um, green. Uh, FI sold 43, 40k calls, bought uh, roughly 35k puts. So let me write that. Sold 45k calls and bought uh, 35k puts bearish uh, that's actually quite very bearish uh, 1200 crores sell bearish stock data is 4000 crores sell, 4600 crores sell that's again bearish you know, on all occasions, my verdict would have been uh, <clears throat> very leaning towards bullish, sorry, bearish. But there are two things which is bothering me. One is weekly has formed an inverted hammer. The second is that on daily, this gap has been acting as a support. It's a doji, right? 
a doji on a gap support now uh, this is uh, kind of making me wonder what's the deal here and the fact that fia data is so mixed is giving me second thoughts in fact this is overwhelmingly negative data and uh, sometimes in occasions like this we have seen that things can be worse also there's no escaping the fact that friday evening there was a rally in <coughs> us stocks and sgx nifty had closed 9400 so there's no point in predicting that boss kal niche gulega especially given that we also have primary data against it which is the gap fill which is the weekly candle which we mentioned on thursday <coughs> and the fact that uh, s&p rallied because of this uh, entire uh, jackson hole and the fact that tomorrow there might be a huge gap in china because they have stopped taxing uh, stock trades right <coughs> now because of all this tomorrow may be a gap up so see if the gap up sustains and sells off or sells off <laughs> right uh, no trades till clarity emerges emerges after the gap up after the potential gap up pakka to duniya mein kuch bhi nahi hota right so who oh, i didn't okay so bank nifty it's a doji it's a gap down doji now let's look at weekly bank nifty this is an inverted hammer right this is a problem like bank nifty has formed an inverted hammer at a downward trending uh, trend line taking it as support so if you look at this trend line Bank Nifty is still above the point where this broke out of this trend line. It's taking support here. It's a doji on weekly, inverted hammer with volumes on doji on daily, inverted hammer with volumes on weekly. <coughs> so let me write that. <coughs> sorry <coughs> and <coughs> let's look at bank nifty's monthly candle bank nifty is forming a early signs of a bearish engulfing but we have to see what happens <coughs> but monthly can be a bearish engulfing now why is it so important that we wait and watch tomorrow See, because tomorrow, if it sustains the gap up and it goes up, then Bank Nifty's monthly candle will not become a bearish engulfing or a piercing, right? Because simply because if it can close anywhere at nineteen five hundred plus, this is not a bearish piercing anymore. It's a failed bearish piercing, which itself is trigger for bullishness. Similarly, if Bank Nifty is able to go up, let's say even some five hundred, seven hundred, six hundred points, which is hardly a percent in Bank Nifty terms, this won't become a <laughs> bearish engulfing in fact it will go back into this channel and it will act as a bullish uh, hammer right so tomorrow's days price action will become so critical that if tomorrow we have a rally then every single thing which market was trying to communicate to us till yesterday <coughs> is invalid and moot simply because nifty's monthly closing pattern changes nifty's weekly closing pattern becomes a bullish engulf uh, inverted hammer with a confirmation Bank Nifty's weekly pattern becomes a bullish uh, inverted hammer with a confirmation, and Nifty's uh, red candle, which looked like a bullish engulfing, sorry, bearish engulfing, will become a bullish hammer. And for all you know, it might close inside this channel. So there are multiple things to watch out tomorrow. Simply because if tomorrow is a rally, uh, because Friday has been a rally, there's a very very heavy chance that all the candlestick pattern formations. Which were in the making till last week, they all will become the opposite of what they were uh, becoming, right? <clears throat> and this is going to be a massive turn of events. So I don't want to gamble into a possibility of a massive turn of event. So I'll watch, wait and watch what happens. Also, there is Reliance AGM in the afternoon and whatnot, right? Uh, <clears throat> Kunal is asking, should we sell bull call spreads uh, already in thousand loss? See now there is no point in selling, right? Because you have taken a hit. You have taken a hit. For all you know, uh, uh, the I mean, you have incurred most of the loss 
on your uh, bull call split so have i right like i have also taken uh, fairly heavy casualties on uh, bull call split but the point is the casualty was lower because you were <coughs> paying the premium instead of selling a put spread which would have costed you much more and asla <coughs> lagi when will i square off uh, my bull call split i think i am holding it till expiry i'll go down with it i'm going to be the you know boy who stood on the burning deck and went down with the uh, <clears throat> uh this thing uh let me just ashish is saying all of the data is negative only maybe charts is neutral that is bearish potential but thing is that we have seen the friday close and there is an issue uh sell on rice market mayur is saying possible potentially which is why we have to see what will happen Ritesh is saying SGX Nifty is not up. They just switch the contract the next monthly expiry. Possible, it could be the poss possibility. Uh, uh, oh, gift is at nineteen two twenty three. Is it? I saw it at. Okay, okay. I'll just check it again. Maybe I made a mistake there. But S and P called closed almost one percent up on. Uh, I have a bull call spread in my positions for this expiry. Four hundred and six hundred. Does it make sense to hold? Uh, see, I am holding the same thing, so you know, <clears throat> maybe I'll uh, regret it. <clears throat> Nifty chart is sensible. Doesn't have volume. The problem is the trading view chart volume that you're seeing is a weighted average of all the stocks, right? So I'm not sure how to add that, but you can look at the futures volume. We'll try to add the futures volume as spot volume if it's a proxy. Uh, <clears throat> what else, buddy? <clears throat> so the idea is simple, right? <clears throat> so a lot of users are pointing out that I Nifty Nifty was not closing at nineteen four hundred. I'll double check it. <clears throat> But just watch out for tomorrow's uh, opening. If it's gap up, simply because. Uh, Of uh, the China and the other event, which is uh, Jackson Hole and S N P, there might be a gap up. At the gap up, see how it responds. If it is falling after gap up, sell it. Otherwise, you know, see if the gap up sustains. Right. So, <clears throat> yeah, that is my analysis for today. uh we'll see you again tomorrow thank you so much for joining on a sunday evening we'll see you again uh, until we meet again please take care and keep your capital safe bye